God will have a very strong influence on those but at the same time the writers are also writing history they're writing events some of the uh, witnesses or for example like in the Gospels they're writing an event as they see the event so they're not saying to God what happened here tell me what happened here they're, they're, they saw something they have some witnesses and they're then writing their account so, if, so it's, it's a bit of a combination if it's of the two right so if yeah. not every single word is inspired by God like he said there some of the writers no, write. not every word not every word no that's what he said yeah, yeah. not every single word is inspired by God how do you distinguish between the words that are inspired by God and the ones that are just the opinion or the writings or the, the yeah of okay. the writer there yeah. yeah so the things that I would say are not relating to where God I would say are not influence or not how he's not his inspiration has not been involved it's things like where people are just writing down history they're writing down this took place so nothing doctrinal, doctrinal nothing to do with doctrine or well doctrine absolutely if it's doctrine god will be involved in it but if it's things like uh like an event that took place right i get you now yeah god i'm not saying god is not involved at all because we just don't know are you saying anything to do with doctrine god then, then we could have confidence in it. yes but anything aside the, from doctrine it could he be the opinion have. of the writer yeah or yeah, yeah because right. it's just it's just okay. it's just a witness statement of an event so there may be his version of the event and maybe another person who also saw like in the gospels the same event right like any two people when they both recall the same event they both watch and then you let you read their events they're not going to match okay. so there is always going to be an element of differences between them and also you also said that you take your uh, your beliefs from the bible obviously you base your uh, belief on the Father, the Son, yeah. and the Holy Spirit being what they, what do you think you are, they are from the Bible? Yes. So I presume that means you get the concept of Trinity, or you get the concept of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit being divine from the Bible. Absolutely. So uh, can you give me some examples of where do you get that from the Bible? For so, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, Certainly in the Old Testament there are um, some hints or clues to the divinity of Christ okay. to give, uh, uh, or the, uh, the three in one, shall we say, the Trinity. So we've got, we even get that in the beginning in Genesis, uh, in Genesis 1 where it talks about the Echad, Echad, E-C-H-A-D. The word is a plural, uh, a, a plural. So when God says it, he created the heavens and the earth and everything. He says it in a plurality sense, not in a singular sense. So this is Genesis chapter 1 verse yeah, 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right. so we already get from scripture that God is saying in the sense of a we. Like the same, it's the same word used, ekad, later on in scripture where it talks you about man Elohim, and wife. Elohim. No, no, ekad. Now the ekad more is an Hebrew word and basically it's when, say for example, man and wife come together as one it's that as one word it's the same ekad used for man and a woman becoming one it's the same way that word is used when god is uh, explaining how he uh, created the heavens and the earth so he's saying it in a plurality of more than one person being involved in creation and when we look through scripture we can see that christ is saying that he uh, created the heavens as well. He was from the very beginning. So that ties in with Genesis that God was not alone. And secondly, it also talks about the Spirit hovering over. So it also talks about how the Spirit was involved in creation. So in the creation, even in Genesis, it mentions all three in the creation itself. Okay. So, so that's the beginning of that, that uh, go, concept. Go, yeah, going back to because I, I am uh, bearing in mind what you said, sure. that you take your concept from the Bible. That's what it should be. Yeah, yeah. If you have a belief, then you should be based on, uh, on your scripture. Sure. Yeah. So, did the Jews understand it like that? Well, one of the things is back then, yeah. um, the plan of God back then was about delivering his people. Saw that mankind was, was so, so wicked, that there was no real future for mankind. The way that mankind was getting worse and worse and worse, God saw that there was no real future for mankind unless something had to be done. And that was all part of God's plan. No, no, sorry, you, you misunderstood me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no. In the concept of God, like you said, yeah. uh, 
the Father is mentioned, the Spirit is mentioned, and you also hinted that the Son is mentioned. So the, yeah, yeah. the, const the, the, the idea of Trinity was there in the Old Testament, you said. But uh, what I'm asking is, the, the, did the Jews who read the same book as you're referring to, did they understand the concept of Trinity from reading those same well, we, scriptures? We, we don't know that for certain because we don't have an account of every Jew and what their view is. But we do know that on the whole, the Jews struggled with understanding that. It became very obvious later on that for many of the Jews, especially some of the, the more uh, outspoken Jews that Jesus was uh, engaged with, um, did struggle. Not only did they struggle about uh, the identity of who Jesus was, but they also struggled with the prophecies in the Old Testament. Right. Let of, me, let of me make the it coming easy. of Jesus. I'll make it easy. Okay. Sure. We don't know about the Jews in history. Yeah. Yeah. Did Moses understand God to be three? It, uh, let's, yeah. Like you said, use persons, because that's probably easier to in our language. So did Moses uh, understand God to be three persons? We don't know that for certain in scripture because right. it doesn't spell it out. But because of God's plan, in terms of the revealment, the, uh, the, the complete revealment of Christ was really when Christ came on earth, that what we saw in the Old Testament was only a precursor of that understanding. So the concept was only at a very mild level. It wasn't in detail where it became easy to comprehend to the point where most Jews probably struggle with it. But the main reason for that was God's purpose was not to really go into depth and reveal that because it became clear and revealed more so in the New Testament in line Do with Jesus. Do you believe, in your opinion, yeah. Do you believe God revealed himself to Moses? Yes. So did Absolutely. God, do you think God revealed himself as three persons to Moses? I probably, I would probably say, probably no in my view. I couldn't say for certain, but in my view, based on yeah. scripture, I don't see the evidence of that. But that doesn't mean, of course, that, that, that the three in one doesn't exist. It's just at the time, I feel it just wasn't appropriate for God to, because revealed at that time, the plan was more about the um, dealing with the, uh, the Israelite nation. It's dealing with how to get them from out of Egypt, get them to the promised land. It's all about saving his nation so that the nation can survive all the way to Jesus' time. So the plan or the agenda wasn't so much revealing the inner nature, the divinity of God, but it was more about the nation. So. That became the focus, and that's what we see mainly about the Old Testament talking about, is the deliverance of the Jewish nation, the Israelites, to not only to, the, to get to their promised land, to also receive covenants that promises that God was promising these people, some of which they will experience then, and some of it was for the future, for the I, generations. I have, I have and that problems. was the main focus with it. I have problems with that. That's okay. Because, for example, yeah. Moses was sent, you and I would agree that he was sent to the uh, uh, sons of Israel. Mm. He's one of them who was sent to them, right? To bring yeah. them back to the path of God. Yeah, yeah. So if he, if God hid from him that he's three persons in one, and he didn't reveal that to him, how can he send him to bring, him, bring them back to the God of Israel? If you see what I mean by that. So he hasn't revealed who he is, but he's asking Moses to go and bring them back to me. That's what the implication of what he said. Yeah, so what I read from that is that the father was making it clear about... So I'm just going to... Yeah, get my glasses on. Anyway, so basically, um, God's purpose, as I said, was not so much revealing in that sense, but He did reveal there were clues, as I say in Scripture. So, if uh, a Jew, or you know, reads the Old Testament, I mean, I don't forget they only had so much passages at the time, and depending which generation they are, they had more of the Old Testament available to them. But with what they did have. 
there are there are clues in scripture that talk about, as I said, the plurality of God, the involvement of the Spirit. No, sorry. So there were point of Moses, Moses, for example. Oh, I'll give you an sorry. example. Yeah. If I send you somewhere over there and tell them, asking you to tell them to uh, follow my orders, but I don't tell you, I don't tell you who I am, and you, you can't deliver the message. You can't go here, you have to follow God. Who, which God? I don't know. Well, at the time, that's a good point. So at yeah. the time, God did what was necessary. And what was necessary is because at that time, the major issue was this, was that the Israelite nation were being misled and going into uh, false worship. So the biggest issue of all, the number one issue that God had to deal with is how the Israelites were turning away from him, getting involved in other gods and all the rest of it, all this false worship, etc. So the main purpose of God at the time was to bring them back to the one true God. This is what I'm saying, that yes. according to you, yeah. Moses wasn't aware of uh, who... The well, I don't know, I just don't know, because it's right. just not been spelled out. Because when I asked you, you said you don't think that he was... Yeah, but it's only my opinion. I really don't know the answer to that question. But does this, the answer. scriptures don't point to that either. The scriptures... If you look at the Old Testament, yeah. it's quite clear who God is. There's no ambiguity about God. Yeah. If you look at Isaiah chapter 45 from verse 5, it actually tells you who God is. I am the Lord. It actually calls himself Savior as okay, well. Fair point. So, but he says beside me there's no other. So he made it clear right. to Moses who he is. This is my point. I, 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 yeah. That's a fair point and I can come back to you on that. So what God was doing yeah. was trying to justify this one true God. And coming back to him, was to say that he was the one true God. But just because he's saying he's the only one true God doesn't necessarily mean, and this is a little bit difficult to comprehend, that he's saying it's just him, the Father, him only, as represents God. What he didn't do is then expand on that from that particular point. But what we do, what we do have is when we look at other scriptures in the way that Jesus is identified. So if we look, for example, in Isaiah uh, 9 verse 6, it calls, so what we've seen here is some scriptures which then talks about the Lord. So we've got that scripture where it talks about Jesus is a mighty God, he's the eternal Father. So there, again, there are scriptures in the Old Testament giving clues to the divinity of Christ. So uh, Divinity? Yeah. No, as, as a Muslim, yeah. I have no qualms in saying, if yeah. somebody says to me, a Christian says to me, yeah. some of the verses in the Old Testament, yeah. they foretell the coming of a Messiah. Yeah or they, they, sure. uh, they are uh, prophecies of the Messiah to come. Yeah. I have no issues with that, because sure, sure. I believe Jesus was the Messiah. Okay. But if we analyze Isaiah 9, 6, for example, yeah. it says uh, that uh, uh, his name shall be the, 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 the mighty, he will be the counselor. Yeah, yeah, will be the, the mighty counselor. And, the yeah. God, and he says, father. the everlasting father. The everlasting father, yeah. Is Jesus the everlasting father? Yeah. In what way was he the father? So, the verse says the everlasting father, and you say it refers to Jesus, in what way is Jesus everlasting father? Well, I would father? say, it's a good question, so my understanding of that, I don't know the precise answer, okay, no, because it's a matter of trying to interpret, but my interpretation would be based on the fact that when we uh, be believing in, in Jesus as our saviour, what happens is, when we're born again, we become children of God. So, I think that principle applies all, all the way through scripture, that anyone that believes in God and comes to God, as the saviour and their hope of eternal life through that God, God makes it clear that these people become his children, his family. So you cannot be a, a child of God or part of God's family until you are within his, uh, his realm as a believer. Mm -hmm. So what Jesus was clearly saying is that when you become born again, you become a child of God. And in that way, Jesus is our father because we are the children. So you could see in one context how the Christ could be the father to all the believers because he's God and he had that role as being, if you like, the father to all the believers. So I, I think that's how just I Just because you're it. there, you become yeah. my punching bag. That's <laughs> but, all right. But isn't there a verse in the Bible that says, call no man on earth your father. You only have one father in heaven. It just, it just depends on context, just need to understand the context. Right, I'm just wondering, yeah. if he's the everlasting father and he's supposed to be the father, mm -hmm. then there's a clash with this verse, your father is only in heaven, there's only one father. Yeah, but again, it's context, so it's, yeah. it's in the context of 
the, if you like, the way that the hierarchy that all uh, believers are what we call the body of Christ and the body of that body being the church, the church is then, the, the head of the church is Christ and the head of Christ is the God. Father. Yeah. It says and, God. Yeah, 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 yes. absolutely. So what we're saying here is, is in that context, Christ is therefore uh, the Son of the Father, but in another context, he can also be described, because don't forget, Jesus has many titles. So it's all about what context can he be described as Father. He can be described as Father in the sense that we are his sons, and therefore he is a Father to us in that sense. So it just, be, just depends on the context. Uh, but what I would say is that when you look at all the scriptures that describe and give the attributes to Jesus, give the attributes, pretty much every attribute that's given to the Father is also given to the, fun, to the Son somewhere in the scripture. So no, what it, I, I don't see it the same way. For example, okay. we see the Father, uh, the, the Jesus, for example, praying, praying. Yep. We don't see the Father praying. Yep. We see Jesus saying, I by myself, my own self can do nothing. Yep. And we don't see that from the Father. Okay. Jesus is sent, the Father is not sent. Right, sure. So everybody is different according to the work. Everybody to, according to the scripture that I see is dependent upon the Father. The, the Father is not dependent upon anything. For example, did Jesus pray? Right. Can I just can I just qualify what you yeah, just sure. said? Just to qualify that, from a Christian position, and this is absolutely consistent to all okay. genuine Christians that have studied the, the scriptures well, is we never see say that Jesus is dependent on the Father from the per from the point of his divinity as God. So in terms of him being God, so before he became man, he was never dependent on God. He was equal with God, but different roles. The only way he became dependent was only from his humanity. Because what happened was this. In Philippians 2, it talks about when Jesus emptied became himself. emptied himself, right. took on the flesh. In his humanity, which is the most... Ray, I forgot your name. Ray. Ray, yes. Ray, yes. Ray. Ray, that causes a big problem for that's me. Okay, that's okay, we, we can go through this. So in the concept of looking at where Jesus says about his humanity, then in his humanity, he's no different to you and I. So as a human, he demonstrated his same behavior as the Jews. But then, I, that was my father, that is my God, I'm only human. So in those concepts, in his humanity, that's where those, those particular verses are. The problem it causes is on the cross. Okay. So who raised Jesus? Right. It says in the scriptures yeah. that the Father raised God, he him raised himself, that's in John 2, 19 to 21. So Jesus raised himself? Yes. It says in scripture. So, so I go by scripture. Okay, no problem. Yeah. So, Jesus, so all three of them were This involved. is what I, I am looking at. Yeah. Jesus, according to Christendom, says that he came, he will die for them, and then yeah. come back again. Yeah. Does God die? As I said, it's the humanity that dies, the human aspect, the flesh that dies. Only the flesh. So the, the flesh died? Yes, just the flesh. So how can the flesh take the sins of the world? I can't take, I'm a flesh, I can't take your sins. It has right, to, right. It, it had to don't be... Don't forget yeah. God, it, don't forget Jesus is fully man as well. Right. And he also you is said the flesh man. died though. Yeah, yeah. The human side of him died. The human side you described was dependent on the Father. Uh, well, okay, yeah. well, what the problem is now is that when you start looking to try and rationalize exactly how that works in something that has duality, uh, a person that has both, is both fully God and fully man, to be honest, to try and define and understand it, I just, just don't think it's possible. I don't think I'm able to do that, but all I'm saying is this. The scriptures are clearly saying that there was a, a, a valid reason, the valid reason being this, that because Jesus was a perfect man, a perfect man, and because he was God, he had the right, if you call it, uh, level to justify that through that death, it was equal as payment for the sins of mankind. So anything no, less than that... Sorry, Ray, what, sorry, what I don't want to do, I don't want to preach, or I don't want you to preach either. Sure, I sure. want to debate the points. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't think the, the Gospels do uh, teach what you just said. And I'll tell you why. For example, if we say that the concept of man 
hundred percent man or whatever. Yeah. Maybe some Christians uh, take offense at the percentage. Yeah, we don't. We but don't, know. We but don't that, that's the only way. All we know is that it's fully man, fully human man. level we can understand, yeah. right? So if I say he was hundred percent man, there was no nothing missing from his. Uh, uh, it's no be, different to be, you and being I. Being man, except that he had no and sin. there's nothing missing from him being divine. So hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. See, if we say that, then to me that causes a lot of problems. Okay, are we, you, you and I, are we required to worship God? Yeah. Was the Jesus man required to worship Jesus divine? Yeah. Oh no, no, no. To worship God. So he did that to the Father. Right. But just the Father. So the Father is the only true God. Well. We don't know precisely. This is what I'm saying. If you said that he, he worships the moment God. you say that Jesus has 100%, is also 100% divine, that means he's part of the Godhead. Sorry? So he's part of the Godhead, yes. Yeah. Yes. So he requires to be worshipped too. Yeah, but, but, but if you think about it, it doesn't make sense that he worships himself. This is what I'm saying, that it doesn't make sense to me either. But don't forget, don't forget, this, the, way that was, the way that works is, yeah. is there is no absolute answer that's in Scripture that says how that plays out. But what we do know is this, is that when Jesus was on earth, he followed the same practice as a human as the Jews. So what he wanted to do is to be as a Jew in the way that Jews are. So he would follow the traditions of the Jews, the way they worship and everything else. So he didn't want to in any way confuse them or mislead people. He wanted not people to look at him in a way that would confuse them. So he was doing everything in his, in his humanity in, in that respect. Yes. So in terms of worship, he wanted to worship the same way as the Jews. And they were worshipping the, the Father uh, and, and worshipping God in heaven. So he just did exactly the same. And that's how we understand no, it. No problem. See, see yeah. right. I have no issues if okay. you say Jesus was 100% man. I agree with you. Sure. The issue I have is when you go to the other bit, it's 100% yeah. divine. So what, what I'm saying is... Yeah. You don't have to show me that Jesus is 100% man, because I accept that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you show me where he's 100% divine in the Bible? Where is he divine? Which verses point to the fact that he's divine? Because huh? the, the man's side, I accept. Okay. He, did, he didn't know yeah. about the fig tree. He didn't okay. know about the hour. He didn't know who touched his helm. That's in his humanity. Again, these are this verses what I'm saying. in his I humanity. I have no issue accepting the humanity side yeah. of Jesus, because he was human. Yeah. We accept. But you now you're saying he's human okay, and divine. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. No so the best way I would say to get any uh, understanding of Jesus being divine is the way that Jesus tried to demonstrate and make that claim. So the method he used, as we can see in scripture, is he never ever said in a way that was clear cut, I am God, da 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 da. And there were reasons we could go into why he did that. But the method he did use was he claims many of the attributes that only can be given to God. So if I have an example that, you know, like uh, the truth, the first and the last, they are some, they are some of the attributes that you would say is only attributed to Allah, okay? Because they are part of your 99 attributes. Right. Jesus was given in claiming the exactly the same attributes and plus others that your, your Allah, uh, you, what you believe God, has attributes only to God. It's yes. also in scripture that there have been attributes to the Father in scripture. He's given himself, claiming those same attributes to himself. Such as you mentioned. Okay, so he claims that he's the I am, which is the ego I mean in Greek. And that is the same words that were used that God described his name. He says that I am the I am. So these were very common phrases used in describing and understanding God's name. All right. So when Jesus applied them, the Jews understood what he meant by that. As, and they even said to you, you saying that you are the I am, you are therefore claiming you are God. And that is for what we want to claim that you are blaspheming. So that was one example. Yeah. He's claiming that he's the truth in John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth and the life. Yeah. And no one can go to the Father unless through me. So he's saying that he is the truth. He is the life. And when I say he's the life, he is the one that gives life. He is the one that's going to be the judge of all mankind in terms of whether they're righteous or unrighteous. In other words, whether they will be in what you call paradise, what we call heaven, for the righteous and the place where the unrighteous Can go. Can I just put it to you that everything you said to me still yeah. doesn't prove his divinity. But I'll tell you why. You started off by saying that he claimed I am. Yeah. 
So if that's John chapter 8, verse 58, yes, I and mean, it correct. cross references Exodus. Exodus 314. Yes. So if you cross reference it yeah. in the Old Testament, what was the name of the of God in the Old Testament? YH double H. The Tetragrammaton. Yeah. Yadveh, Habve, yeah, yeah. 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 Which we don't know precisely how to pronounce, Nobody knows. but no big deal. But for ease, they say <laughs> Yahweh, you yeah. know, for ease. Which Yahweh, when you look at the meaning, it's something like the I am. But don't forget this I am was something that was repeated a few times in the scripture. If in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, yeah. it says, For God is not the author of confusion. Yeah. Right? So yeah. God, when he gave his name, yeah. and then afterwards he gives an ambiguous statement, I am, and you say that I am is the name of God becomes ambiguous. Well, it depends how you look at it, I think. Right. So, so, then you went to, and you said, uh, what else did you say? Uh, is the truth, is the lie? Yes. He, uh, and I, I believe that, okay. without having to believe it. And here's another thing. He forgives all sin, no problem. sin. No problem, I'm, I'm all, coming to that. Forgiveness of all sins, and that's another Allah attribute. I'm coming Only, to that. Oh, sorry. I'm coming. Sorry, okay. So, for example, you said that he's the way, the truth, and the light. I, I accept Jesus was. Okay. I also accept Moses was in his time. Yeah. I also accept that other prophets were in that time, including Muhammad. When a prophet comes, yeah. he's the truth sent by God. That prophet is the truth sent by God. He's the way to God. And he's the life. Why? If you follow him, you get eternal life. This is the understanding. And the, the last one is forgiving sins. If God gives me the power to forgive, am I God? Okay, let me explain that. Yeah. This is what has been brought up to me before. There's two different understandings of when we talk about forgiveness. Disciples forgive sins. So what we're talking about here, if you've done some wrong to me, I'm forgiving you so that from that specific uh, sin, I'm not uh, holding that against me so that I want to be free from any burden so there's no revenge. Okay to what you've done wrong on me. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying I forgive you because I want to express that same qualities. But what I cannot do is forgive you of all of your sin as a person. Only God can do that. So that's what we call ultimate sin. And that's what, when you look at in, uh, in your Quran, it even describes this ultimate sin that only is attributed to Allah. That is the forgiveness of sins that clearly Jesus is claiming that level Did of the sin. disciples forgive sins? But I'm talking about if anyone can forgive sins, it will only be on the authority of Jesus if it's done on that capacity. And if it's done yeah. on a one-to-one -one level, it's just you and I in that level. If Jesus was giving authority by God, like in Matthew, uh, the last penul penultimate verse in Matthew, by the, the, the Great uh, Commission, yeah. when he says, all authority has been given to me. Yeah. So if forgiveness has been given to him, authority to forgive as well, all authority. I presume that uh, that uh, well, also includes the authority yeah, to forgive. I think. Let's say if if God gives you the authority to forgive, can uh, let me establish first. Can sorry, sorry. can God give you the authority to forgive? No ultimate forgiveness. No. no. Can he do it? I don't know the answer. In the Quran, we have similar thing when uh, Joseph, Yusuf. When his brothers finally found out who he is and he yeah, brought, yeah. they asked for forgiveness. He forgave them. Yeah, yeah. Does it, we don't take J Joseph as God because he no, forgave no, them. No, of because he's a messenger of God. Yeah. He had a message from God to say, tell them they're right, forgiven. Right. I, so what I'm saying is, yeah. if God gives you permission to forgive, are you God? Different type of forgiveness. This is, well, I, this is the bit I want to make clear. Yeah. The forgiveness that I'm talking about that Jesus was talking yeah. about, where he made it very, very clear, it's talking about ultimate forgiveness the forgiveness of all your sin and that is only what God can do because it even says in scripture that only God can forgive the forgiveness of mankind we're not talking about the individual forgivenesses that you and I and others may be allowed to do but ultimate forgiveness the complete absolute forgiveness of mankind is only an attribute to God it doesn't say all of uh, ultimate forgiveness yeah, of mankind absolutely. for mankind for all of mankind anyway yeah if we John 3 16 then John 3 16 said For, forever though, whoever believes yeah, in him yeah. it doesn't say he forgives you this is what I'm saying see John 3 16 says Oh, I show you the scripture. So Maybe God so loved on. the world that He gave His ultimate son, or begotten Son, or all, all, his all son. those that believe in Him. So that makes so all whosoever scripture. believes yeah, in yeah. Him has eternal life. Eternal life. So so never perish have eternal life. Let me give it you one. Talk about, uh, yeah, sorry, I may have made a mistake yeah. there. Let me give you the one where He, he doesn't. I can't remember. I found. 
That's okay. It's okay. It's. Um... But the, the, can you see where it says forgiveness here? So. Yeah, yeah Mark. Yeah, here we go. Mark two verses five to twelve. Yeah. No, that's fine. I, yeah. So that's, that's where it I'm says. I'm aware of the verses. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the disciples also had the power to forgive. But what I'm saying is, if you go to Matthew, like yeah, we said, but not ultimate forgiveness is what I'm saying. It doesn't say ultimate though. Yeah, the verse that says about forgiveness, your sins are forgiven. It doesn't say your ultimate sins. Okay. This okay. Is, yeah. The reason why that can be tricky is that when you look at those scriptures. We're looking at cases where individuals have certain uh, abilities. For example, um, I have the ability to potentially heal you if you had a problem. Okay. But what I can't do is do it on my authority. If I'm going to heal you, I have to heal you in the name of Jesus. It's the authority of Jesus that heals. And there's, there's many scriptures where the disciples were healing, not on their authority, not on their human ability. It's always on the authority of the name of Jesus. They didn't say in the name of Father, they said on the name of Jesus, I heal you. So that was the power of the name of Jesus you can heal. So Jesus, as a part of the Godhead, has that, um, this is the first thing, he has that authority. Secondly, it also says, everything that the Father has, I have also. Everything within the Father, I have. Whatever glory is to the Father is the glory to me. Whatever is in the glory to me is in the glory to the Father. All you have to do is put all those scriptures together and look at how the Father described, look at the way Jesus described, and you see an amazing match of attributes, behaviors, responsibilities, and etc. And if we go to Matthew, this Matthew that we spoke about, okay. the Great Commission, Jesus says to the disciples, go, and, and uh, you know, yeah. spread the gospel. Yeah. It says, go sure. and baptize in the name of the Father, oh, the, the Son, Son the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yeah. And also, yeah. you, you went to another point, because I want to combine them, the, sure. the two things you said. Okay. That, uh, uh, they heal in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So now, they go and baptize in this, but they actually baptize only in Jesus' name. If you look in the book of Acts, right. in the book, book of Acts, it tells you, it lists almost every baptism. Okay. That was done. Yeah. From all the baptisms that, that I looked at, yeah. only four have in the name of Jesus. Nothing in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. This this uh, formula. Okay. So my question was that did they disobey Jesus? It's a good question. Yeah. I don't know. And the other thing is when he said uh, what was the other <laughs> thing that I was trying to combine together. Sorry. Uh, I was trying to follow you. <laughs> the, doing it in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that will go against scripture. Against what Jesus himself said. What you think goes against scripture. I'll put it to view, you and you can tell view. me whether I'm wrong. Sure, sure. So in uh, Matthew chapter 7, uh -huh. verse 21. Yeah, that's about. Jesus says, not everybody that calls me Lord, Lord yeah, will yeah, go to heaven. Yeah, yeah. Except only those who do the will of yeah. who? The Father. The Father, yeah. Right. Don't forget, this is when Jesus was on earth and he had to do things where he didn't want to confuse the aspect of trying to say in the name of himself in that context because he knew that these audience would be confused. So again, he, he had... never said it in his name anyway. Huh? He never subsequently or any other time said, do it in my name. What he said is, verse 21 says, not everybody uh, that, uh, that says, Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom yeah. of heaven, except those who do the will of the Father. Yeah. Then immediately he says, on that day, many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, yeah. did we not prophesy in thy name? Yeah. And in thy name will cast out the devil, devil yeah, yeah, yeah. and the demons, yeah, yeah, yeah. and in thy name we did so many miracles. Yeah, yeah. And Jesus will say to them, go away from me, you yeah, that... Well, in, or evil doers. And yeah, some, yeah, well, whatever, yeah. In the NIV, so, I think. <laughs> but <laughs> what I'm saying is, these people, when I hear that description, they sound like righteous people because they're casting out demons. They're not working oh, for okay. demons. Okay. They're not working for demons. They're casting out Let demons. Let me explain this thing. And then they're doing Sorry. mighty works. Okay. Mighty works can't be bad. All right, let me explain that yeah. for you. There is what we call a contract between God and the devil. And this is how it works. With Satan, he has certain rights in this world. And what can happen, as you know, I don't know if you know this or believe this, but people can be possessed. Okay? Yeah. So the devil can enter into some people, or one of the demons can enter in a person and have an effect. And they become what we call possessed. 
you can't just say to that person, leave demon, it won't work. And irrespective of your beliefs, irrespective of whether you're true as a, as a Christian, if you call out in the name of Jesus, the demons the contractually know that is Jesus. And under the name of Jesus, they know the power and authority of Christ. And they fear the name of Christ, because they know the power of Christ. I wanted to understand, see, the, sure. you know the person when they, they exercise this person, yeah, yeah. or they, get, the, yeah, they get them out of Jesus, yeah, yeah, uh, in the name out. of Jesus, yeah, like yeah. the verse says. I've seen it. Does the person have to be righteous, the person no, doing it? No, It can be a, a, an unrighteous person doing it. I, I would say so. And Jesus will answer them. Well, don't forget, what's casting them out is not the person, it's the authority of Christ. So if you say, in the name of Jesus, leave, the demon recognizes the name and it's on the name they're looking at. However, if the person is not true or genuine, I don't know where how well the demon can recognize that and play games, but it's, it's, it's what we call a contract. The, the, the demons will be affected and influenced by that name because they fear the name. That was what I do know. Okay. So here's the second point. When Jesus says, I do not know these people, it's because these acts of trying to cast demons and do these good acts is not the basis of someone's uh, salvation or the basis of, of what Jesus sees in the person. It's about their beliefs. So if their beliefs is not genuine, it's not about the works that they do that Jesus is going to judge, but it's on their belief of, the genuine belief of, of God. If they, they believe Jesus is Lord, they call him Lord, yes. Lord. Yeah, but if they're not genuine in the heart, so people can say, I could... But the verse doesn't say that they're not genuine. Uh, yeah, but, uh, it says, oh, uh, I, I appreciate yeah. that, but what I'm saying is, that gets explained later on. So the, the problem with some of those verses, if you look at them in isolation, you can draw the conclusion, like you, you could do there, to say that everybody that's casting out, it seems like there's a contradiction. But Jesus puts those points in, but we then have to look at all scripture and see how it fits and reconciles. And it all does, it does fit. So right, going back to Matthew, yeah. when Jesus says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, yeah. does God have to be given authority? We're talking about the context of him qualifying. Um, um, and what I try to explain there is that each of those, uh, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, have different roles. So there was uh, a role from when Jesus was on earth that he was given for his specific duty as a man. So in those contexts... But he, this includes heavens as well. Yeah. So the role on earth, I understand, it says all authority on earth and in yeah, heaven yeah. has been given. But it also says that Jesus had all these attributes from, from, from always. Right. But my, my question was yes. that does God have to be given anything? That, is there anything anywhere in the scripture where the Father's been given, I think given it, authority? Yeah, I think it's... I think it's, it's taken out of context. It doesn't mean like he never had it and he was given it. It doesn't mean it in that sense. But how can he be given it if he had it then? It's a different context. So if you're saying that, yeah. it doesn't mean that he never had it. He's, so how, how can he be given it when he didn't have it? Uh, when, he, when he had it? That's a yeah. presumption. Well, yeah, but what I mean is, is that I think that's taken it out of context. I don't think it was framed in that way. So, that's what it says. It's I the think it's a way... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's saying it in the way to, as context so that he can define the framework of what his responsibilities were. So he's really just reiterating the responsibility as to that audience. So he wasn't saying, you can think it, it could suggest that maybe he never had it at one point, but he then does qualify that he has always had those qualities. But for to, that, me, to me, if I said to you, yeah. a carrier bag has been given to me, I know, I know, I know where you're going with that. But, that's, yeah. but we're looking at the human terms, you see. The, but this is, this. Yeah. God can only speak to us in human terms. Not fully, not but fully. What he, I'm saying. Not fully, you see, because he reveals things to us that, that also encompasses his nature. But what he doesn't do is fully expand no, on no, that No, no, no problem. Because some of it yeah. is uncomprehensible. No, I, I want to expand on what I just sure. said. That God speaks to us on human nature. Yeah. At the human level. At the human level. When it comes to matters that are critical to our salvation, yeah, right. Yeah. When it comes to matters that are criti critical to our salvation, salvation, sure. God does not speak in riddles. I don't believe. I agree. It, right? I agree. 
This is why God degree. says he's not the author of confusion. Yes. It doesn't mean that he explained to us everything. his everything, no, no. who he is okay. entirely. That's good no, I don't believe that. Okay. I believe everything that's critical to my salvation, sure. God made it easy to understand. Yeah, Simple. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So who's God? He made it easy. How do I worship? I, what do I do? What, what must I stay away from? He's yeah. made all that clear. Yeah. But to me, with all due respect, sure. the most critical, critical definition should be of God, who God is. Before I start worshiping, I need to establish who I'm worshiping. But this concept, according to you, um, I'm not according to you, according to Christianity, yeah, the way yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, when I speak uh, to Christians, uh -huh. I find they find it really difficult to define who God is. I think one of the reasons for that yeah. is trying to reconcile the understanding of the nature of God uh, in terms of a free person's okay. in one. And I accept that as a that is a challenge because in terms of truly understanding that, that is beyond our comprehension. We can't understand because we've got no example to understand how free people can be in one being. Because when we look at beings and we look at persons, it's always a one-to-one -one relationship. But where do you get this concept from? By the reading the scriptures. So here, the concept, even the concept is not there. This is how I believe it is there. What, what we do have in scripture are three main aspects that to me, only by looking at all three can you draw that conclusion. So what I mean by that is if I, this was the Bible and I read this whole book, and if I read this book in a way that I was looking just for the answer of that question, what would be the conclusion at the end of it? And this is what I would say. I can see from scripture that there clearly is only one true God. I can clearly see that the Father is God. I also can see, as I read scriptures, the revealing of Christ as God. And I have not one or two, I have hundreds of scriptures that point to that. So, I've got to reconcile those. I've got to find a way of... What do, so I can see that Jesus says that he could be worshipped, he could be prayed, and as I say, he's got all those attributes. It also talks about the third category. And that is that when God works in many aspects throughout history within scripture it talks about how all three work together it talks about how the spirit works with the father and all that connections so when you take those scriptures where it shows the three working together i know it's not saying they're one but what it is saying they're working together you've got all those attributes you've got you've got you've got the behavior of christians and believers uh, expressing uh, uh, attributes and ways to deal and engage with Christ in the same way they would deal and behave to the Father, like worshiping Him, praying to Him. So all those things. But the, the, the thing is. So, so let me just finish up. So with all those things, I come to that conclusion, and the only thing that's making that a little bit of a challenge is the humanity of Christ where it talks about when he talks about within his humanity he then doesn't bring up those qualities he brings up the qualities as a person that he's going to the father there's no mention about him as God in those concepts in those situations and that I do agree can be confusing but when but you read it everything in time, you said yeah. everything you said okay. I still don't see divinity for example All right. Jesus being worshipped what other char uh, characters in the Bible worship was David worshipped David was worshipped on the throne. So there were other people in the Bible that were worshipped. Okay, so that's yeah, yeah, that's yeah. announced. Yeah. Unless you take them as God, then I would ask you how why would that make Jesus isolate him as God? Okay. Then you said other things. Let me I think it would be best to ask Jesus who the true God is. See if you look at John chapter 17, verse 3. Jesus tells you who true God is. The problem with that is... Let, let me finish oh, sorry, the verse. I apologize, so it says, yeah. this is life eternal, eternal life. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God. Yeah. And Jesus Christ, whom you sent. Yeah. So from verse one, he's addressing the Father. So now, he's, if he said that this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, or God, I can see that there's a leeway for you to say that part of that God is Jesus too. Yeah. But he's isolated the Father as the true God. He didn't say the Holy Spirit, he didn't say yeah. the Son. So how do you reconcile that with what you just said? what I'm saying, yeah. Jesus, as I said, in his humanity, 
is, so let, let me explain the, the two reasons why he's doing this. The first reason is when Jesus was on earth, what he didn't want to do is cause any issue about deflecting the identity and recognition as the Father as God. So he didn't want to say that in some ways point himself to God to cause an issue with, as if to say that some Jews will do this, they will think and they will claim this, you are saying, I thought the Father was good, now you are saying you're good. Rather than him trying to explain himself, they will see that as if his, it's him saying, it's not the Father is God, I'm now saying that I'm in God, that I'm God. And if he had said it like that, they would easily make the conclusion as to, do, as to take away the, the divinity of the Father's God and placing it on himself. And the second, so that was one of the things he didn't want to do. And one of the main reasons was the second point he didn't want to do that was one, to not dishonor God as a human. And secondly, he had a plan. His plan was to die on the cross to save mankind. If he starts going around saying that he is God at that stage, there's no way he's going to get to that point. He's going to be, he's going to be stoned to death well before that. So he had to also make sure that with his narrative, it wasn't so clear cut that, that they had the clear knowledge that he was God to the point where they could then kill him on that blasphemy without any doubt. They had the justification and they could kill him well before. Then he would not have achieved God's plan. So, so what you're saying reason. is the reason of Jesus saying that to the Father, you are the one true God. Yeah. Eternal life means that life in paradise. Eternity. Eternity for forever. You know, being alive for eternity means you're in the... Yeah. In paradise being dead for eternity you know in hell yeah yeah so he's saying eternal life to attain paradise is to know you the yeah. one true God yeah is he addressing the father yeah, he's addressing right the father. so what you said to, you said that he didn't want people to think of him as a God as well as well as the father at that time, yeah, that he's addressing the father he doesn't need to say this why is he saying this because what he has to say, the, the context of the narrative then was all about false worship and all the false gods. No, but he's addressing the Father. If you're saying that by saying this you'll confuse the people, why is he saying it at all? As a human. No. Also in terms of his capacity as a human. So he's that he recognizes the Father as God, as a human. So after that, he says that I have completed the job you gave me, or the task. Yeah. He says I have glorified you from God. Uh, you have, you have, uh, I have completed the work you have given me. I have glorified you on earth. Yeah. And this was before crucifixion. Yeah. So he's saying, I've finished the job you've given me. Yeah. So does that mean crucifixion was extra? It wasn't part of the mission? You know, you said this paves the way for the crucifixion. Yeah. If yeah. he has completed the work the Father gave him, well, not Why? fully, of course, because you have to die, well, die. Well, that was that's, part of the plan. That's your, word. that's your words now put into the verse. If you look at the verse, it doesn't say not fully. It says, I have completed the task you give me, gave me. Well, I have completed the job you gave me. I have glorified you on earth. He's finished the job that yeah, Father again, gave me. It's all about context. That's all about context. Let me, let me finish, sure. then you can... What he's saying, yeah. he's not saying anything you said yeah. that not fully completed. Or, I've come to die for people. He's addressing the Father from the very first word in the verse, first verse. He says, Father, you know. Then he says, he says other things. Then he says, life eternal. Then he says that I have completed the task you have given me. I have glorified you on earth. So to me, that's his job done. What it's the Father gave him. Yeah. So why, so what, what about crucifixion and all that? Is that not, is that something above the mission or outside the mission the Father gave him? Well, let me put it this way. Um, we'll have to look at that verse a bit more closely, to be honest. Um, Do we have a Bible? <laughs> uh, on the phone. Yeah, we look, look at it. Yeah. So, one of the things with Jesus is that in his purpose, he had to do a number of things. Let me, you want me to hold the book? Oh yeah, thank you. It, it's, uh, let's, let's look at the verse rather sure. than what Jesus said elsewhere. That's just giving you a bit of backdrop. No. So, we do know that Jesus had a number of tasks, not just one or two. Of course, yeah. And we believe that as well. He came to guide uh, the sons of Israel back to the real world. He had to sort the mess out with the Jews and what they were doing. He also had to have a message of hope, uh, a way out, which is... Uh, so the message that they of salvation. Could, yeah, yeah the salvation, salvation yeah. the route to help. Because they we were agree basically with not saying at that point. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. 
he also had to uh, formalize a new covenant. So even for the Jews, that because they are as they are, they may have the promises of their, their covenants, they don't have the promise of salvation because to have that salvation, they need to come under also under the new covenant, which means they need to take on the belief of Christ, which at that time they didn't have. I believe what Jesus said in Matthew 5, 17. He came to bring them back to what Moses brought before them. Right? So, because yeah, yeah. they deviated from the, the law. So Jesus comes and says, I have not come to destroy. Yeah, but to fulfill. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. But the fulfillment is under the new covenant, so it does, it does expand on that with the new covenant and what that new covenant means. So you have to bring that into the whole equation. But yeah, let's have a look at the uh, chapter you're talking about, the verse. John 17. Oh, I should know this one. Do you want me, you want me to hold that? Are you okay? No, I'm fine now. Yeah, just taking my bag off. Verse. Yeah. Do you want to start from what verse? If you, even if we could go to verse one. Yeah, of course. Because we to establish that he's addressing All the right. Father. Shall I just read this out? Then? Yeah. So these words uh, spoke Jesus and lifted up his eyes in heaven and said, "Father, the honour has come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son may also glorify yes. thee. Yeah. And has given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou had given him." And this is the life eternal, that they might know who the only one true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou sent. And I have glorified thee on earth, and I have finished the work which, which has given me to do. That's it. Can you stop there? Yeah. So, as I said, which, which is that? Which version is this? The, is that King, King, That's New King, King James. James. New King James, because I'm, James. That's King James, I'm familiar King James. with the old King James. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little bit so, interesting, the wording. So NIV says that uh, this is life eternal. I think NIV. This is life eternal, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, who, whom you've sent, which is that yeah. says. The next verse says, I have glorified your honor. I have completed the job you gave me, or the task, whichever version. Yeah. So if... He came here because the Father sent him, and he sent him with a task or a mission or a job, and he's saying he's finished the job, and this is before the crucifixion. So is the crucifixion not part of the job the Father gave him? So when he, do you know, uh, John, do you know when this particular verse was written? Is this while you're still on earth? I asked uh, 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 Reverend Samuel Green, yeah. and he said this is, this is before Okay, speech. that's fine. Okay, so, of course, so the thing with this is that we don't have this expanded to, okay. to, to detail. But, I mean, I don't think this is a big, big, big deal, because all we do know is that in terms of what it is saying, it's about the glorification. It's no, about, it's crucifixion, which is... Uh, no, no, critical. this bit here. Oh, right, okay. It's talking about the glorification no, 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 and the salvation in terms of eternal life between yeah. the Father and the Son, and how that... That's not, uh, yeah. That's how it's, that's what's been said to begin with. Yeah, yeah. And it says that, that, and that through this, one is, what he's basically saying is that through this, the Father's been glorified, and that I've been glorified, giving glory to you in that, you know, and, yeah. and the eternal life that comes that with that. That still doesn't show his divinity to me. I'll tell you. I can explain how. Right. Well, I'll come to it in a second. Yeah, uh, so then he says, I have of thee on earth, have finished the work. Now, what we don't know is what context he means by work. Because yes, there is this crucifixion still to be done. But then he hasn't finished and that verse is incorrect. No, no, no. It just depends on context. So we just need to get a bit more background of context of what we mean. I'll have right. to do some research on that and I'll come back to it. No, no, no problem. Because my so I don't point, know the answer found. If Jesus come, yeah. that's an honest answer. If Jesus has come to die for my sins, yeah. then that would have been pre-agreed previously. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, with yeah, the yeah father absolutely. Everything. It would be part of the mission the Father absolutely. would send him to, uh, yeah. send him with. I agree. But if he's saying before he was crucified, the mission is finished, then to me, crucifixion is not part of the mission. I think it depends on how you read and interpret that. And so. as for the glory, yeah. I want to qualify the same chapter, 17, yeah. If you go to verse 21, right. if you say that glory that Jesus was asking back from the Father yeah. makes him divine, in verse 21 of the same chapter, yeah. he's saying 
that he's praying for the disciples to have the same glory. So they are, they are all one with God yeah. and Jesus. Yes. So it's, it's nothing divine about right, that. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. So that's fair point. Yeah. So what we're talking about there is talking about uh, how we as uh, as individuals that become believers become one right. I accept in, that. in yes. concept. God uh, because uh, we saves are, them. Yeah. Takes because them? by yeah. becoming his children, yeah. we receive his spirit. We receive the uh, blessings and, and the relationship. Yeah. So we become one in that sense. But to really explain about the glory in the best way, I would say, is we go to John 5.23. So in John 5.23, it says that we honour the Son the same as we honour the Father. Now, that's a very, very powerful statement. To me, it still doesn't make it uh, divine. Well, I tell you why. not much I can do about that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it has to be unambiguous, clear. I'll tell you why. If the ambassador of Chile comes here, yeah. you honour them, you honour the entire Chile country. Sure. If yeah. you dishonour him, what do you do? You dishonour Chile. That doesn't mean that man is the country. Okay, I get well, your point. A messenger of a country comes here. I get your point, but here, here's the thing with this. Yeah. The difficulty is you take every single verse in isolation, you can come up with all sorts of different interpretations. And, and one of the difficulties Ray, is, be, it, Ray, yeah. is be, yeah, Ray, yeah. Is to be convinced that Jesus is God by looking at a verse and then looking at a verse and looking at a verse. No, so, no, no, Ray, so, what so I'm just, saying is... Can I just say yeah, this? Sure. So the only thing I would say is the way that as a Christian, I get convinced it's not by reading this verse and this, this verse, it's when I take the whole storyline, when I pack it together and, and see all the things that we explained about how Jesus is on the right hand of God. He's there in heaven next to God. He has the power to get to, he's the one who's going to judge the righteous versus the unrighteous. When you get it all together, what is the most logical conclusion you can make? That he's less than God right. or not? That's, that's my point. The thing is, obviously you yeah. have your biases put in here. I'm trying to be as... No, no. When, when you look at the verses. Yeah. But to me, uh, ask me about the Father in the Bible. I can answer without ambiguity. The Father is God. Jesus said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Father doesn't pray to anyone. Yeah. The Father doesn't say, why, why have you forsaken me? It doesn't say that to anybody. Look, this is clear. Sure. You do not have a clear verse like that, or close to that, where Jesus is shown to be divine. Right. You don't. See, when, when you're trying to uh, show that Jesus is divine, you're struggling with the verses. Can I have a... Yeah, sure. Well, I'm not struggling, but I can't. But this is what I'm saying to you. There is not a single verse that shows the divinity of Jesus without any ambiguous oh, okay. interpretation. Oh, I, I do actually the possibility have, I, of ambiguity. If I have it here, I do actually have one yeah. that's very good, uh, where it says, um, and then it says, um, let me see if I can find it, because this is a very, very good verse. Okay. Um, no, no, it's, it's not coming from there. It's just coming from me. Well, I apologize, I don't know. This is one I should know off by heart. That's right. Oh, here we go. Hebrews 1.8. So let's go to Hebrews 1.8. Right. This is very clear cut. Let's see. <laughs> well, Hebrews, Hebrews is attributed to Paul. Paul has a distinct idea. Of, of course, he, he has similar ideas with you. But he also has the head of Christ is God. Yeah, yeah. as I say, that's, that's the hierarchy. It's, yeah. to do with, it's not to do with the, the nature, it's to do with the role. Because there are different roles, there are different responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. Between he the talks about uh, the head of a woman is a man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Same thing, like, yeah, yeah, the man is the head of a woman, but it yeah. doesn't mean the man is, is superior yeah, I, I, to the woman. I agree, I agree. Just as intelligent. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know what I'm going with that yeah. one. Because <laughs> in the Quran it has a slightly different view, in my view. I'll read this out to you because I think this is very good. And I'll really read this slowly. This is obviously talking to the sun. But unto the sun, he says, thy throne, O God. That's reference to uh, Psalm 101, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Verse 1. But have you had that? Explained by a Jew in Hebrew. I'm sure they have their ways of spinning this. The, here, lo the Lord used for the Son is never used for God. For righteousness. Is forever and ever a of no. righteousness. Um, but, I mean, if you certainly read the whole of. Uh, shall I read Hebrews 1 up to a certain yeah. point and see what conclusion? Try to be as neutral as you can. Have you heard of a rabbi, a rabbi called Rabbi Tobiah Singer? Mm -hmm. He explains that in Hebrew. I'm sure he does. And I'm in sure Hebrew, nobody, yeah. no Jew takes the Lord because 
and here, see, in English you have the capital. At the end of the day, that's a separate subject. We'd have to go with what no, we've but, got. No, but because this is cross-referencing that. Well, well, Sums. Let me explain that. So, what Jesus was doing was one of the key things. Don't forget, and I try to explain this as well as I can. As Jesus was a man, he was a Jew, he was with Jews, his word was to the Jews. As a human being in flesh, he was addressing the Jews. He wasn't going to the Gentiles or other nations, he was going just to the Jews. That was his main, one of his main purposes. He had Paul and the disciples to then cover the rest. But his purpose when he was, when he was alive as a human was to the Jews. So when he was going to the Jews, he had to be like a Jew, he was a Jew, he, he, he followed the festivals, the traditions and everything. So when he was acting, he had to act in that capacity. So to make it easier for the Jews to understand a lot of what he did and why he did it, he always worded it in a way to cross-reference to an Old Testament. So what he did was this, one of the big things he would do is to say, like, when Jesus, when it says in Psalms that God the Father, uh, before the, uh, the creation of the world and all the rest of it, he applied that exactly the same aspect to himself. So what he was doing, every time there was an attribute, a title, or anything that was attributed to the Father, he cross-referenced that scripture and then applied it to himself. So, so that was another very powerful way that Jesus was trying to make... I thought you said this was a, a, I do apologize. a clinical, critical verse. I thought... In what's, there's yeah. a house of lords here, eh? <laughs> they're not all gods. No, I know, but it's the way that it's been described, because yeah. it was also the false gods, of course. So, unless Jesus is going around trying to claim some false God. No, but the thing is, I haven't heard or seen anything, even here, right. anywhere. God, who is, who is at times, uh, in manners, spoke in the past, the fathers and by the prophets. And in the last days, it was spoken by his son, who has been appointed the heir of all things. By whom also he made the worlds. So here... Still not divine. No, 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 Through just, him he was made. Right, here's where you got a problem with that. God says that when he made the world, he said he did it alone, with nobody, on his own. I think that is in Psalms somewhere. Okay. He said I'm when he created the earth, he created the earth, you can maybe look this up. No, I know that God, there's one. only one God, but I don't yeah, know yeah. that. There's, there's a scripture where God says, says that when God created the heavens and the earth, he was alone when he did it. He had no one with him. But then Jesus also attributes to himself that he made all things. In Colossians uh, 2, it talks, or Colossians 1, it talks about he made all things, all things. And so here also, in, and just in a few scriptures, it, it talks about he was there at the very beginning, uh, he made all things, and as I say in Genesis, it talks about See, we made. The way I understand... So that's got to be reconciled somehow. No, I'll, I'll try it. The way he says yeah. that he was there from the beginning, Yeah. Do you believe God is all knowledgeable? Yeah. Or does he start to learn? No, no, he's all, he's all knowledgeable. Absolutely. So in the knowledge of God, were we all there? Yeah, yeah. We were. Sorry? In the knowledge of God, were we all there in the big from the beginning? What do you mean by were we were there? Sorry, I'm not sure. Example, did God know Ray only when uh, Ray was born or no, before? No, no, you know in advance, yeah. Of course. So we were there before. Everything, we yeah. were also there. Yeah, sorry, in that sense. Yes. In that sense, yes, yeah. yes. So I can reconcile that. So he's not divine then. Why so when Jesus says, I was there from the beginning... Because only God is not all knowledgeable. When I was there from the beginning, yeah. so was I, so was he. No, in the knowledge of God. Yeah, but you're creating a different context to just... But this, in the context of that, the knowledge you of God... You can take any scripture and you yeah. can put any context and spin on it and make it something but else. Really, That's possible. What, what I'm trying to point is there yeah. is not a single clear verse in the entire New Testament. I agree. To, to the way you're, you're trying to demand it. No, no, I'm not demanding. I'm no, saying... for your personal satisfaction. To be convinced. What did Jesus say or do that I mean, makes it without any shadow of a doubt? Is also Let me put it this way. Yeah. The only true way to understand the, 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 the Bible and the divinity of Christ is not to search out explicit verses, but to be able to reconcile all the verses together. It's only when you pull them together in summary, when you consolidate them, you get the answer. But and that was the you purpose will not. of the I'll tell you what, if, well, I, I have, if, I go, I if I go with the mentality that I want to see if Jesus yeah. is human, I'll only concentrate on the human side. Yeah, you can see the humanity of him as Similarly, well. if I go yep. with the divine concept, then I will have that idea. If I go with no biases, then I don't see any verse that shows me Jesus is uh, divine. If anything, for example, I'll throw you I'll throw yeah, a sure. verse for you. Yeah. 
this is the closest verse that combines in from your point of view the human yeah. side and the God side of Jesus from your point of view because I don't accept his divine in Mark 13 32 do you remember what Jesus said there's a verse in the Quran that's similar okay they asked Jesus about the hour Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah, the Quran yeah, says one. the same thing in chapter 17. He says, yeah. Luna can isa. The they ask the hour. you about the, the hour. Yeah, yeah. He says, of that day and that hour, no man knows. Right. No, not the angels yeah, in heaven, no, nor the, the Son, yep. but only yep. the Father. Yep. Right. To me, this this is uh, this clarifies the whole matter. If you say, well, say it'd be very dangerous to look at one verse to, to make that bigger conclusion. But if you That's believe, if think. you believe Jesus said it, yeah. I don't believe Jesus was a liar. No, but you got to understand the context. Oh, no problem. Okay. But I don't believe he was a liar. So what he said in this verse, yeah. if he said it, yeah. and I accept as a Muslim yeah. that he said it because yeah. only God will know the hour. I accept that Father. as a Muslim. Yeah. The Father is true God. He also mentioned that. Yeah. So now, if if we follow the verse for, uh, uh, carefully, he yeah. says, of that day and the hour, sorry, That's okay. I didn't know the time was. We're, we're so, fine, we're fine. Uh, of that day and the hour, yeah. no man knows. Yeah. If Jesus.